Hey everyone, this is Alec from Reddit's Hex Encounter community. Thanks for joining me tonight. The game we'll be playing tonight is Decision Games RAF, uh, Battle of Britain 1940. This is a John Butterfield solitaire design where the player plays um, the commander of the RAF forces attempting to defend the British homeland from attacks by the Luftwaffe during the Battle of Britain. Um, in the box for this game, uh, in the, the physical box, it comes uh, maps and rules for players to play both sides. And so there's actually a variant uh, RAF uh, Eagle where the player plays the Luftwaffe operational air planner um, sending the raids, uh, and then there's a two-player variant that kind of mashes up those two roles. Um, now, the reason why we're doing a solitaire game today is uh, largely with me just getting behind on uh, game preparation. Um, the uh, My uh, opponent for last week's game, where we played... Uh, uh, no Retreat, the Russian Front, uh, Bruce Garrick, uh, is unavailable for the next uh, week or two to finish up the game, so we'll have to defer that. Uh, I do have one or two friends that uh, will be looking to join me to introduce real live uh, players at a, for a physical board game, and we'll stream that, uh, introduce people to wargaming, but again, haven't had time to coordinate that. So here we are with just me plopping down one of my favorite solitaire titles. Uh, I see that we have a few people uh, checking in on the Twitch chat. Uh, welcome. Uh, glad you can be with us there, uh, Tony. And, uh, you know, uh, feel free to chime in if I screw something up or if you got a question or you just want to chat. And anyone in the stream, uh, feel free to hop in. But we're just going to kind of get started here and start in on the first turn. So uh, we are, uh, the game, the Vassal module sets it up uh, uh, for you. Uh, all the aircraft are kind of where they need to be. Uh, so we're looking good there. I'm going to attempt to play with the advanced game rules, uh, but without the optional rules of the night, uh, night fighters and night attacks. Uh, and so we're going to start here with a um, uh, time of day check. And so coming here to the card decks, we're going to go to the uh, event cards. We're going to draw the first of the uh, event cards. Actually, I'll just drop it right down here into the discards. Uh, and it looks like time advance one with no advance warning. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, time advance one, we actually won't start at 0, 0600. We'll start here at 0, 0800. I do not have advance warning, so I don't know what the next two raids might be, uh, but we'll be all right with that. I'm gonna roll a D6 here to figure out what our weather is. So pull that guy, a six. Uh, this is good for me. This is gonna be awful weather for the RAF. So uh, the six gives me broken, uh, there we go, Broken Clouds and Luftwaffe 2, and uh, for Luftwaffe 3, we have Patchy Clouds. So I will take anything that keeps uh, the RAF, I'm sorry, the, the Luftwaffe from doing uh, good uh, bombing. Okay, uh, advanced warning step. Uh, we will not be doing that uh, because we have no, uh, no advanced warning on the event card. And now we can start doing patrol assignments. Okay, so what do we have going on here? What is this? Um, this target is likely in the southern part of Luftwaffe 2 AO. So I've got a big force coming this way. Those of you that knew this game, this map is upside down. So if you want to just turn your screen 180 degrees and you'll see London here in the southeast of uh, the aisle where it's supposed to be. However, uh, as it's presented here, uh, the British player is essentially sitting at the bottom of the map. Uh, with the raids coming in from the top and from the left. So uh, here's a line of demarcation here um, between uh, the Luftwaffe to east area of operations and south, kind of bisects Dover here with uh, 611 Squadron <clears throat> being the one responsible here. So it's going to be coming this way. Uh, so I'll start by putting up some uh, patrols. Um, bring this guy over London, he'll scramble. Uh, I know they're coming here to south. They may not actually end up here, which would be regrettable, but we'll just go with it. Um, you can uh, patrol into an adjacent territory, and so I'm actually going to uh, utilize that rule to bring in some patrolling aircraft from neighboring parts of the area of operations that wouldn't otherwise really be able to reach. So for instance, if I pull in one of these hurricanes up here to come a little bit further south and patrol. This will actually um, effectively increase uh, the number of uh, squadrons I have concentrated down here. I'm not gonna bring up 
everything. Let me bring one of these guys over. Um, but I will scramble enough where I've got something up pretty much everywhere. There's some things ready to go. So, uh, Tony, if you think I'm being an idiot here at any point, feel free to chime in and let me know if uh, you'd scramble something else. But uh, with that, I think I've got, I've got something up everywhere where it will be coming. I'm going to have my pants down if they come in someplace else. This early in the war, you typically don't see him going too far into uh, Luftwaffe 2 East. I might consider scrambling here uh, uh, into... Um, uh, Luftwaffe 3, but, uh, you know, in fact, let me do that. Let me just go ahead and uh, push one squadron up in each of these. Um, uh, I see Tony uh, commenting here that uh, he doesn't have any experience in this game, can't comment. Uh, I always like to think of these war games a little bit as a role-playing game in that regard. If, if you don't have an experience with the mechanics of the game, uh, then just park yourself in the role of, uh, and try to immerse yourself in what is the game trying to model? What is it I feel I should be doing? Um, and and how, how do we do this? Um, uh, Elegant, thanks for coming by. Uh, yes, this is a war game on Twitch. It's a tabletop war game and you're welcome to stick around. Um, so, okay, so I've done my scramble. We've got some squadrons patrolling the skies and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we've got some squadrons patrolling the skies, and we're now going to be able to proceed uh, to see how this goes. So, uh, it's now time to uh, figure out what the actual target's going to be. I'm going to come over here to the handy-dandy left side where uh, they've got the sequence of play printed right here. So we've done the weather forecast, we've done the advance warning, um, <clears throat> and now we're in the raid phase. So let's grab that target and send this to the map. All right, where did that where did that go? Here we go. All right. So, drum roll here on what the heck this thing is. All right. Radar net four uh, in the two eleven sector. Um, so now let's figure out if um, let's see here. We'll just kind of go through this. Um, one thing that we'll note is that as a radar net with a strategic value 2, we're going to check here on the German raid priorities table. Uh, and we do note that at this end of the war, radar nets are uh, a high priority. And in fact, we're only going to have uh, a very low chance of this ending up being a minor raid. So that will be useful for us when we uh, go to determine raid priority uh, and uh, their deployment. So. Okay, so we've revealed the target. Uh, we've checked uh, the type and strategic value. Oh, and I guess we roll now to determine if that's major or not. So uh, first roll here. Um, I see some discussion here on SCS. Uh, uh, I've done a little bit of SCS, not a whole lot, uh, and, but I'd love to get to play it more. In fact, if anyone's willing to you know, uh, run through and teach, uh, coach me through a game like uh, Bruce was doing with No Retreat, uh, that'd be a lot of fun. But okay, so if I roll a one here, this is a minor raid. If I roll anything other than a one, it's a major raid. So okay, I rolled a five. We have a major raid coming here towards this radar net. Um, okay, so we now roll for detection. So we'll note here that for detection, we have the two radar nets active. In fact, let me pull this entire card up here by the detection track. Here we go. Okay, so it's a major raid. So this is going to have plus three on this DRM. Um, additionally, for the observer core value, this is in Luftwaffe 2, which is broken cloud. That's really bad. So our observers aren't going to be able to see this through the clouds. So we're not going to get any help from our observers. So three for a major raid, and but we do have two radar nets uh, undamaged that will be able to detect it coming in. This would be part of the chain home network uh, that was used to detect these. So uh, two for each of those radars, four total radar DRM, three for it being a major raid. So this is a seven DRM uh, to figure out where we are on this track. So let's give that a roll. Okay, seven plus six is a 13. So the warning is early. I got plenty of time to understand this, but the intelligence is poor. Um, and that's just going to be what we have to, to, to live with here. So, okay, early poor is what we have here for our uh, when we can react to this. So uh, the next step is 
poor squadron commitment. Um, and so we kind of have to make the call right now without knowing how many aircraft or what their composition is. Um, you know, we just don't have that much intel. Uh, so let's go ahead and commit them. So we're going to note here that at early, uh, I can pretty much get anyone that's patrolling in the sectors in route. So I can get anyone patrolling in 211. I can get anyone on the ground in 211. And furthermore, I can get anyone that is patrolling in 1 or 7. So let me kind of grab all those guys. So in 1 or 7, I can get the patrollers. Um, so here's 1. I got that guy patrolling. So I'll send him to the hunt box. That's control U. And 7, control U. And I can get pretty much everyone here in 211. So let's grab all of these guys and hope that I didn't get head faked here. All right, not too bad. And you notice here in the VASA module, they auto sort, auto sort these by indicator A, B, or C, which will be helpful for us. All right, well, uh, I am, uh, I'm committed. We're gonna do this. So uh, I now go to raid size determination. So I'll grab these cards and I'll find the, um, da, 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 da. this is a force card, I believe. Yep, so I'll grab a force card. So, as a major raid, this has nine, uh, uh, nine group in it. So now I know how many we're going to have. Um, and now that I know it's nine group, I will actually deploy that raid. So this is now step six, uh, and so I'll go ahead and get the cards. And I'll come here to the force cards, and I'll draw another force card, and this will actually give me the composition. I'll be picking uh, elements one through nine from Luftwaffe two on this card, okay? So, um, let's see here, one through nine. So that's a pair of 88s and a pair of 111s. So let me come over here and grab those. I only have the two 88s, so those will go to the bomber box. And now what were those? An A and a C, so let me make sure I get a B from the 111s. Um, there we go, a B and, an, B and a C. Oops. All right. My uh, multi-click is uh, failing me, so let me just do it manually. All right, there we go. So I've got the four bomb group. 88, 88, 111, 111. I'm going to have, let's see here, four 109s and a 110. Now, selection rules force me to get one of the elite 110s, so I'll grab one of the elite 110s. He will be close escort. And then I have to have four of the 109s. So one, two. Um, we'll send you all to the hunt box for the moment. Three, four. All right. Now we'll note here that one of these 109s is actually designated CP as a channel patroller. So I'll go ahead and move this guy to the channel patrol box. Uh, he's essentially hanging back, protecting the exit route uh, over, over, the, over the channel. So uh, I believe that's what I've got here for um, uh, raid deployment. Uh, I got lucky that I committed and everyone showed up. Um, so uh, that's, that's nice. I'm done with these cards now, so I'll discard them. All right, so where are we? Um, I've done the raid deployment, and now we're going to do hunter interception. So we'll note here, looking down here at the hunter interception box, that um, I actually have more um, uh, uh, intercepting groups than I do, uh, I'm sorry, intercepting squadrons than I do Luftwaffe uh, group and uh, that they're tussling with. So I kind of have two options at this point. I can either let all of these um, Hurricanes and Spitfires tangle up with these uh, ME 109s uh, and get a lot of kills uh, and, and uh, bring these guys out. But, uh, and I'll have a fairly favorable row uh, when resolving that combat. The problem is going to be that um, I'm not necessarily going to get through to the bombers. And the whole point here is to start intercepting these bombers and knocking them out. 
So I think what I'm going to do is I uh, may actually use the Fend and Evade rules. So this is an advanced game rule. Uh, if at least two fighter squadrons are in the hunt box and at least one group is in the bomber box, I can declare Fend and Evade. I select a pair. One of them goes through reduced and the other one um, stays there in the box. And so for instance, uh, I can choose this pair here, the B pair, and say that um, the uh, 74 squadron is running interference, so 615 squadron can actually get through and uh, get to the bombers. And so we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna reduce him using the fend and evade rules and send him forward. I could do this one more time uh, if I wanted to, and I'm really tempted to do so. The Spitfires actually have fairly good parity in this game with the 109s. Um, but I think I'm going to go with it. I think I'm just going to, you know, take my chances. I definitely have a bomber interception, which is going to keep them from, uh, you know, just carpet bombing and getting some favorable shifts on the bombing resolution due to not having been intercepted. And, you know, I know I've got some hurricanes getting through now. So we'll just do that. All right, so the next thing I have here on the uh, standard uh, sequence of play is the raid... Um, Raid Approach Event. So I'll go to the cards here to the event deck and I will pull the Raid Approach Event. Okay, oh, this is awful. Okay, German altitude advantage if any of the following apply. Uh, no warning, reduced squadron in the hunt box or prior to August 20. Well, the game turn one starts on August 11th, so that does apply. So the Germans have altitude advantage which is going to give them a, um, a shift in their favor on the, uh, uh, it's going to give them a shift in their favor on the uh, combat resolution table. Pardon me while I pan around the map here. I'm just looking for, in the physical game, there's a little chit to remind you that there's altitude advantage. And I am not quite seeing that. So um, I'm going to, uh, just leave that and remember, someone remind me if I, uh, when I go to Resolve Combat that they have altitude advantage. Um, now someone asked about producing these videos. Um, Tony, is, uh, you're wondering how far in advance do I prep in reading rules before I stream the games? It depends on the game. It depends on my level of familiarity. That's kind of why I, I propose these four solitaire games. These are all games I could pretty much go to and then brush up on and, and play without too many rules omissions or errors <laughs> as I go through. Although, of course, I'm not infallible. Um, if it's a new game, I like to have uh, a week or so with the rules and maybe uh, a couple hours to push around uh, the chits by myself uh, so that I can go through and have this be a worthwhile experience uh, for the viewers. Uh, and so I like to have a week or so to prep on that, which is uh, why I kind of found myself on a pickle this week. Um, but you know, usually, usually a week or so. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I, I want to stream every week. I want to get out here and so that there's a regular event and a regular piece of content. But... Um, you know, it, it, this, these games do take a little bit of homework, and this isn't like Fortnite where you can just like hop in and start, you know, playing and being awful, and you know, but you can still do it. And I, like, you know, this, these games don't play themselves. You've got to do the rules and everything for you. So um, I think weekly is about as much as I can hope to get some of these things out. Okay, so um, the Germans will have altitude advantage, and I can't find my pneumonia. Oh, wait, wait, right here. Uh -huh. All right, German altitude advantage. I knew it was going to be somewhere somewhere nearby. Okay, so uh, that was the raid approach event, and now we're going to go into hunter attack. So this is going to be going against the CRT. Any of you playing at home, um, Decision Games has it on the website, and it's also in the file section on Board Game Geek. There are uh, rule flip rules flip books uh, for this game and a number of Butterfields titles that actually really help streamline uh, getting through the game, and I'm using one right now. So okay. Um, so we are here, uh, and I have um, a group in less than squadrons, um, and I, oh, I'm sorry, that was a, a, an error previously. I did not need to fend and evade previously because I could do it for free. The fend and evade rules apply if, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, the way it's written, you can do it. Uh, however, you'll notice here on the just the standard rule, not even in the advanced game rules here, if the squadrons outnumber the group in, you can just push the excess one. So I will do that without doing offend and evade and uh, just say this guy gets through without um, 
uh, without uh, delay. You know, excess full squadrons can go to the bomber box or they can go to in flight or they can stay here in the hunt box. And so that's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, so we've done that. And uh, now we're going to look at the total combat rating. So um, I add up the combat factors, which are all the numbers here on the right side of the letter designator on each of these. So um, uh, for the grouping, I've got zero times three, so zero there. Uh, I've got 12 for the Spitfires and another three for uh, the Hurricane, so 15. Um, a uh, question from the chat room about whether or not I solo a lot of two-player games, mostly play solitaire games when playing on my own. Um, you know, that's a fair question. I, mean, I think we all, uh, in all honesty, I think we all kind of do a little bit of both. I, I enjoy solitaire games that uh, are designed to have some intelligent system uh, behind them that is tractable, uh, that, that uh, you know, can give me a sense of a, an opponent that's playing historically. Um, but that being said, um, the, a lot of two-player games, the separation of information, you're able to divide your brain in two, if you will. That's a little bit harder with a card-driven game, like playing uh, No Retreat against yourself. I find that I miss going, oh yeah, I wanted to interrupt myself on my other turn to do this. And it's hard to, you know, uh, split your brain like that. But, uh, you know... Uh, Basically, I buy I will buy anything Butterfield makes. I think he just does a brilliant job on solitaire designs that are that are uh, innovative. So okay, uh, so at this resolution, we've got uh, 15 combat factors uh, against three group. So looking here with no depletion with three group and 15 combat factors puts me on. Um, da, da, da. Let's see here. Yep. So three group and 15 combat factors puts me on row. F, okay, which is actually a really advantageous uh, role for the British. Uh, however, that altitude advantage um, uh, gives the, the Germans a shift in their direction. So this will be resolved on row E uh, of the combat results table. So I'll go ahead and roll uh, D6 on that combat results table, and you just read straight across. Okay, and that roll was a 6. Couldn't hope for more. And so what we end up with here is um, the A groupin uh, aborts. And so a full group that aborts goes, uh, flips to reduced and goes to in flight. The B groupin is disrupted. A disrupted group just goes to in flight as is, without flipping. And the C groupin is actually light loss. So I will um, move him to the light loss box. And I will note the victory point on the VP schedule here, noting that a group in suffering a light loss is a one shift uh, in the DRM in my favor. All right, so that's what happened to the German fighters. For mine, the A group in are disrupted. I'm sorry, the A squadrons are disrupted, uh, which means that they go to in flight reduced. Uh, that's a little regrettable, but. So these guys flip over, go to reduced, and come here to end flight. The B squadron goes to light loss. Uh, you know, this doesn't happen for free. And so that's another shift back. So no net victory points there. And then C is actually unmolested. Uh, so he comes through. So uh, checking the advance rules on generation of an ace squadron, I didn't have a big enough difference in victory points uh, on that to uh, allow me to the creation of an ace squadron. So uh, that is what it is. So here is uh, where we are. All right, coming back here to the sequence of play, now that we've done our hunter attack, we now do the raid target event. So back to the event deck, and we'll do that raid target event. Target event, non-essential target, reduce bomb damage result by one. Damage does not affect uh, radar targets. Uh, that's good, uh, but the VP still counts. So he's not gonna be able to knock out the radar. He got distracted by some auxiliary building, but he'll still score victory points. You know, maybe he hit the mess tent or something. So, um, okay, so reduce damage by one and uh, only VPs. 
All right, uh, so now we're gonna do squadron interception. So as you can see here, I've got a whole mess of bombers and only two squadrons uh, to grab them. So I can choose uh, the two squadrons that actually get, uh, I'm sorry, the two groups that will end up being intercepted and I can let the other one slide. Uh, and I'm going to let the two 88s slide simply because they're, they're harder to kill. <laughs> I get less favorable uh, shifts on that. Now the question is here, what happens to this close escort? Um, let's see here. Uh, for each non-intercepted bomber group, and choose one close escort that will also not take place in combat. So essentially, this guy was tucked in near these bombers, and my uh, squadrons chose to intercept the folks that were further away from escort. So all of these guys actually are now not involved in this interception. So this interception is now between these four units. Uh, I've got seven combat factors from my um, uh, German altitude advantage still applies. Darn it. Okay. Um, I've got seven combat factors from my units. I've got 12 combat factors from the bombers. So, you know, this helps me. So, seven and 12 is 19 uh, combat factors against two groups. So, this actually nearly pegs me out. That's column H, um, which again for altitude advantage shifts us to column G up one, and I'll have to roll this now on column G. So rolling uh, against column G, four, also not bad. All right, so the A grouping doesn't apply. Uh, the B grouping is disrupted, so the full bomber group disrupted stays in the box but flips. Okay, so that's him. And the uh, this bomber group is actually light loss. So I'll get another light loss victory point. All right, now for my guys. Um, this B, uh, so I don't have any A's. Nothing happens to the B, so he'll just come straight here straight. And C is an abort. So the abort result for a full squadron go, uh, reduces him. Flip. And... There he goes. Okay, and so that's then the conclusion of interception. Uh, still a lot of bombers here to uh, bomb their targets, so we'll see how this ends up going. Uh, so now for bombardment, let's see here. Um, we add up the total bombing strength of all these bombers, so uh, three and then 10 is 13. Um, we roll a die, find the damage based on that strength. So uh, 13 is actually a fairly um, impressive uh, amount of um, bombing strength. Let's uh, clarify again this uh, rate event. Let's see here, eee, come back. All right, reduce bomb damage result by one. So the result is what's reduced. Okay, so I'm on the 12 to 14 column uh, rolling and that's going to be a five. And actually, let me shift this because there will be some shifts. Um, yeah, here we go. So I did have uh, squadrons in the bomber box and this is broken cloud. So this gets shifted to the left, which is eight to nine. A five result is two for the bombing. Uh, however, that's reduced to one per the target event. So I will lose one victory point due to the bombing result. Okay, they did hit some stuff, got a pretty good hit, uh, but thankfully didn't do any excess damage to the radar, which it would have. Okay, so um, now that that's complete, we go to um, German recovery. So all bomber grouping and the bomber close escort and channel patrol go to in flight. So we'll just bring all these guys over. And, all right, so, um, all right, so everything's now in flight. So now for the grouping and the in-flight box, the bomber grouping go back to their bases reduced. So let me grab these guys, reduce them. Grab this one, okay. Send them back to their bases. Um, we are, probably. That probably sent them over here. All right. Where did those Germans go? It's always embarrassing when you lose counters in the module. All right. Well, let me undo that. So I have no idea where I put them. <laughs> and I'll just drag them up. 
So the 111s is kind of here reduced. 88, 88, got it, okay. Uh, full fighter group, go to the clock, three spaces ahead. All right, so these, I know where they go. So say two base. Ah, I thought I, oh, that is not where I wanted them to go. All right. Two rear. Yeah. There we are. All right, so here's what they are. So the full ones go uh, on this uh, clock track that tells us when the raids are three spaces ahead of the current time. So at 0, 0800, three spaces ahead will be 1400. So 14, 14, and 14. And uh, this reduced guy flip, oops, flips over and goes four spaces ahead. All right. All right, and so now we do the clock update. So we look at that last event card that we drew. Oops. And we note the time advance. No Luftwaffe depletion, time advance is, oh, wait a minute, that's not the right thing. Here we go. Time advance is two, per the card. So for a time advance two, we actually get a whole bunch of things going on. We're going to have a whole bunch of airfield operations and there's a whole nice big long list uh, over here of all the things that you do for uh, a two time time advance. Um, I am nearly certain that I can click advanced two and this will do it. So let me try it. Uh, no, that was overly simple. All right. All right. So let's actually run that out. Okay. So uh, rearm and land, which we have none, go to the sector. The patrol go to the sector. I think that's what this does. Uh, yeah. All squadrons on patrol go to their sector. Um, now full in flight go to their sector. So let me find the full ones, you, send you to your sector. And now the reduced in flight, uh, go to rearm flipped to full. So open them to full and send them to rearm. And the module puts them where they need to go. All right, excellent. So uh, that is the end of the, um, let's see, flip the full. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I should have, of course, moved this two time periods ahead to 12 o'clock. I did the squadron turnaround. We now do advanced warning. We note that this card does not tell us that um, we don't have advanced warning. So we're going to go ahead and take this card to the map. Actually, let me discard the old target. Okay, we're gonna take this card, to, this card to the map. And I have advanced warning. So the advanced warning is actually still Luftwaffe 3. So both cards, the current one and the one coming up are Luftwaffe 3. So I wanna make sure that that side is shored up pretty good. Uh, and now back to squadron patrol assignment. All right, Luftwaffe 3. Let me move this up here. All right. So three is over on this side, and here's the line of demarcation coming through Portsmouth. So um, yeah, we're just going to assume, I'm gonna assume that they're gonna stay this early in range of the 109s. I don't think they're desperate enough to try and come as deep as Cardiff or Bristol. So let me bring these fighters up a sector. In fact, let me bring both of these guys over here. Um, I'm going to have uh, these guys come forward. I'm gonna have this guy come forward as well. Uh, technically, three could even be here at 111, so I'm gonna stay here in Uxbridge. All right. I'd like to get two patrolling on each of these um, coastal areas. Okay, so I've got a good patrol here in the Luftwaffe 3 AO. I feel pretty comfortable committing that much because even if this card doesn't pan out, the next card will. So, uh, so there we have it. All right, so let's come back here. Uh, we've done, we're in the raid phase. We've got the raid target determined. Oh, well, let's do the raid target determination, actually. 
All right. Um, Luthal 3, Radar Net. Uh, this is good with a strategic value of 1, however. So let's see how that plays out. Radar Nets are still high, and strategic value of 1 is here. So there's a chance that this eat raid either won't happen or it'll just be a minor raid, which wouldn't be too bad. But let's see what we got. 5. Still a major raid. Okay, so a major raid at this radar. Uh, British detection. So back up here, and we'll see how detection plays out. Okay, Luthal 3 is only broken clouds, so I'll get one from the observer, three from the major raid, that's four, and then I get three radar nuts on this, that's going to be uh, two each for six radar DRM, so three, one, and six is ten total DRM, so rolling detection with ten DRM, womp womp, roll the one, so that gets me an eleven, so I have sufficient warning. I am able to get squadrons patrolling and in sectors in route. So essentially 410 is it. Whoever is in 410 here, these three squadrons can react. Now if I so choose, I can actually do a delayed response. This is one of the advanced game rules. A delayed response is essentially, instead of you committing to the attack as the bombing groups are inbound, that you instead um, marshal your forces and hit the mother over the target and leaving the target. Uh, so the, the enemy is able to get to the target mostly unmolested, uh, but you still do hit them when they're on their way out. Um, and potentially get more forces. And so what that serves to do is actually shift you um, one uh, column more in a more positive way on the warning. So I'll go from sufficient to early. So that will um, allow me to get patrolling in range. So allow me, that'll allow me to bring in patrolling squadrons in 310 and 111, which would be these two and this one. So I could potentially, I have three squadrons I can bring to this right now if I, uh, if I just do this as a traditional intercept. If I choose to do a delayed response, I can actually bring six squadrons on it and uh, potentially really schwack them. So um, I'm going to go for it, <laughs> maybe. I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, if it was an airfield, I certainly would just do the interception um, and, and try and knock out a bomber or two. The, uh, I, I, I couldn't stomach uh, them hitting metal wall up hard. Um, and if, but if this was industry or something, then yeah, I'd delay, whatever. Bomb the things you're gonna bomb, get a couple of victory points and do it. With the radar, I could go either way, right? These radar plays into the um, detection of subsequent raids and these die roll modifiers. You know, I, as a player, very much know how important uh, electronic warfare and radar detection is. And the British valued it as well. And, and um, the Luftwaffe uh, planners had a pretty good strategy of going after the airfields and the radars early in the war. But uh, eventually later in the war, um, the Fuhrer's directives pushed them other ways. So um, they shifted away from that. But uh, I don't know, potentially being able to double my firepower could really hit a blow on these guys. Um, but in doing so, it would uh, you know, allow the channel patrollers to come in. I'm gonna have a few more grouping to deal with and uh, um, they're going to get to bomb this at whatever their full strength is. <sighs> All right, I think with three, I'm gonna go ahead and, and treat this as a straight up intercept. I think, I think I'm not going to, uh, not going to uh, do anything silly with the advanced rule at this point. Okay, so we have our detection, it's sufficient limited. Uh, I, I do get, um, and actually, thankfully, I also don't have to make that call yet. I do get to see what's in this raid. So let's go ahead and do uh, the raid size determination. Um, where'd that target card go? All right, let's see what we got here for raid size. Be a force card. Okay. Uh, again, it's nine. So I know it's nine big, which you know is going to be three or four bombing group in, like we just saw. 
I don't know, five or six fighter group. And uh, I'm going to be overmatched. Hmm. All right, you know what? I am going to declare delayed reaction. Increase my warning level by one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You can't. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right. Oh, of course that is under. All right. All right. So we got delayed de delayed response. I'm going to play this uh, and earn myself from sufficient to early warning, which will allow me to bring in anybody patrolling in three and eleven. Um. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna do that. So all of you guys, uh, everyone in 410, which is where the target is, will go. Um, everyone patrolling in 111 and 310. So there's 111, and here's 310. All right, so there's the hunt box. And I will now do the raid deployment. And so, <laughs> so this, uh, I need to remember here that this is Luftwaffe 3. I'm taking nine of them. Okay. So for Luftwaffe 3, at nine, two DO-17s and an 88. All right, I have no DO-17s. So I do have an 88. Um, Let's see. If no group of the selected type are available, substitute other fighters for fighters, bombers for bombers. Uh, so this is essentially going to be 388s. So let's get an A. Oops. Let's get C, A, and B. Send to bomber box. Okay. So that gets me the three bombers. Um, I then have six 109s. Is going to be nearly all of their 109s. Luftwaffe 3, uh, compared to Luftwaffe 2, was really under resourced. All right. And those guys will go. It's under the hunt box for now. Uh, we'll note on this card that this drives that one of these 109s is a close escort and one is on channel patrol. So you are the escort and you are on channel patrol. Okay, so there we have it. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is just go to the actual advanced rules and double check on page 21 the delayed response rules to make sure that I understand uh, the shorthand that I am seeing uh, in uh, the the play aid, uh, and let's see what we have here. Um, your decision to delay response must be made during squadron commitment, as we did. If you choose, place a delayed response marker on the ray display as a reminder. Um, and here's how it affects squadrons uh, at a higher warning level. Groupen assigned to channel patrol are deployed to the hunt box. Uh, move them if already deployed. So the this channel patroller is actually in the hunt box. German bombing is conducted before resolving squadron interception and attack. Gruppen do not leave the raid after bombing. They remain for the squadron attack. They treat all losses, etc., etc. Okay, so the effect here is going to be that we still will have the hunter interception as it is. But when we get down here to squadron interception, instead of doing squadron interception bombing, we're going to flip that. We're going to let the bombing happen first. Okay, so um, here we are at... Our um, th this interception, I've got five Gruppen and six, uh, yipe, five and six. Um, I am going to bring one of these in through. Um, I'm going to use the. Um, actually, I think I have a raid target event to do here, don't I? Uh, let's see here. Um, no, that's actually happening right now. Um, so the hunter interception, so I'll take the B unit and allow him to get through. So now I've got five and five, that's fine. Now that I've done the interception, we'll do the raid approach event. So I'll grab the event deck. Raid approach event. British altitude advantage if very early, 
or after September 11th. Nine, neither of those hold. Okay, so the event is any. Now we'll do the hunter enters. Uh, now we'll do the hunter attack. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so three and eight is eleven, and seven is eighteen. So I have eighteen combat factors uh, on the hunter attack. Um, mm -hmm. With five groupin. Uh, so let's see here. 18 with 5 is on the E column. It's still a good for me column, but uh, not by much. So, uh, okay, so rolling on E, 4. All right. All um, Luftwaffe group uh, abort, actually. So the abort result for the Luftwaffe group uh, puts them on in flight reduced. So we'll flip all of them and send them to in flight. Oh, well, I guess I'll just drag them to inflate. Okay. Uh, thankfully, none of them come around to be defenders. Um, and for myself, the A's go to light loss. So this hurricane goes to light loss for a victory point in the Luftwaffe's favor. These actually are unmolested. They go through in their entirety. And then C's are disrupted. And so at this point, a full squadron that is disrupted can either go to the bomb box reduced or to in flight in full. Um, and at this point, I actually will um, have quite a few combat factors here. I, I'll do pretty okay. Let me reduce the Spitfire, bring him in, and let the Hurricane uh, head home. Okay, um, so that is our Hunter attack. I'm actually fairly happy with that result. Um, and now we'll go into our Raid Target event. Okay, Secondary Target, all C groupin. Uh, Bomb the secondary target. What is the secondary target? Um, radar net. Secondary target, the port. Okay. So I'll just segregate C here so that I know that when I resolve him, he's actually bombing something else. Um, okay. All right. So uh, we now will not do squadron interception, squadron attack. Uh, what we note here that... Um, uh, for this delayed interception that we did, or this delayed response, that essentially the bombing gets to happen with before we get a chance to disrupt the bombers. Um, we don't have the, the two-column shift penalty for not resp uh, responding at all, but bombing is conducted before squadron interception attack, so we'll do bombing now. So we see that they actually bomb now in two groups. Uh, the first group here, uh, the A and the B, go for the primary target, which is the radar. So that's 10 combat factors between the two of them for bombing. Um, it is patchy cloud, so that's a one column shift to the left, which is on the eight to nine column, and that's it. So this is ugh, bombing the radar on eight to nine. So I'll go ahead and give that a roll. Four, that's a two. So two more VP for the the Luftwaffe, and what we know that for damage effects, uh, for bombing a radar for two damage, put a light damage marker on the radar station. So this is um, the Worth um, chain home station, and uh, I have to put light damage on it. Okay. All right, now uh, I guess this is good that these guys went after the port instead, so I'll resolve their attack now. Uh, Four to five is their column, shifted one left due to the clouds. They're on the three column for bombing, uh, rolling their attack. Uh, they roll a three on the three column, which is no effect. Okay, so bombing's com been completed. They've uh, scored two victory points and they've damaged one of my chain home stations, which I am very, very, very much not happy about. But now we do squadron interception and attack. 
So uh, let me shift these around. Um, we're about to get into a rather regrettable thing, which is one aspect of the way that you sequentially do these interceptions is you'll notice I've got no A squadrons here, and I've just got this big pile of B. So either all the Bs are going to be fine, or I'm going to have heavy damage on three of them, right? And so this is one of those things where this is an artifact of the system and, and, and one, I'd say, justifiable criticism of the system. Um, there, as, as long as, you know, we're all, uh, you know, adults about this, one thing that you could choose to do if the idea here is to more equitably um, randomize and have a, a range of outcomes is you could choose to say, for instance, for the purpose of this result, I will treat this as an A, uh, and which actually I'm going to do. Uh, that way I get a, a broader spread and I don't have the big, it feels very swingy to me when I either get everyone off scot-free or everyone getting light damage. Um, so uh, we're, I'll, I'll play it like that. We'll call that a house roll. Okay, so on this squadron attack, um, let's see what I have here. I've got 15 uh, factors from the bombers. Uh, I then have 13 factors from my aircraft. So 15 and 13 is 28, and there are four grouping, uh, including uh, the escort. So um, 15 and 13, I said I had uh, 28 against four grouping. Oh, I like this. Okay, so this is on the G column of, uh, a G row of this combat results table. So we'll go ahead and roll this. Let's see. Okay, that's a two. I don't like that, but we'll take it. Um, all right, uh, so all A's are disrupted, and so uh, that's essentially no effect here for the delayed response, so we'll flip him. Um, the, uh, let's see, the B grouping are all heavily damaged, so that is great. So those two guys go into the German heavy loss box, uh, and that's a net four victory points for me, um, stringing it from three in their favor to one in mine. Big damage there. Uh, and the C group aborts, which uh, again, for a full bomber group, aborting is essentially fine. Okay. All right. Um, now for me. Um, a, fine. He comes home without an issue. Uh, my Bs go to light damage. And see, this is just the kind of effect that I, was, you know, I, I did a separation to try and mitigate. So these two group go to light damage. Um, light loss for two VP. We'll just flip that over. And then finally, my C is, uh, squadron is disrupted. A reduced squadron that is disrupted just goes to in-flight reduced. Okay. So that's what we have. And that is the conclusion of that interception. All in all, I think I'm okay with that. Getting heavy damage on two groups uh, is actually a, a great um, uh, coup for me. So uh, I think that's actually fine. And I got a whole bunch of these guys that are probably out for the rest of the game. So let me send these to rearm. Let me see if I can figure out where these guys go when they go to rearm. Boy, I really lost those groups. Oh, they come right here. They come over. Aha, they go. They just kind of go in the English channel. Um, they can stay there. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so as per usual here, um, uh, a full group, so a fighter group would go three spaces ahead, which would be 1,800. Uh, however, um, the reduced group um, go four. Um, so instead, we're going to send these back to their base. Reduce side up. Okay, and they can't. We know that they can't be deployed. All right, clock update. So let's check our event card. Uh, this is a time advance two with no advance warning. I'm going to discard all this stuff. So time advance of two brings me through these. These guys all go back to their base. Let's see here, to base. We are now at 1600 on the first day for our third wave. Um, the time advance to here, the 
Anybody in rearm goes back to their sector. So these three guys go back to their sectors. Okay. Uh, patrol, go to sector. I'll do that with P2 here. Full in flight, go to sector. And these guys flip and come here to land or to rearm. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, there is, for those of you that play on a Tabletop Simulator, there is actually a pretty good module for this in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, pretty well implemented uh, and uh, um, it, it looks great. Um, the one thing that is missing, which is really kind of uh, almost a deal breaker for me, is um, all of the scripting and automation. It's just a little bit too much of uh, literally hunting and pecking around and nudging counters. So, uh, yeah, all right. So, uh, let's just see what else we have to do on this um, airfield operations. Uh, so, we've done our squadron turnaround, now advance warning. We noted that on that card there was actually no advance warning, uh, so we will not get advance warning. And so all I can see here is that it still is Luftwaffe 3, and I don't know what's coming up behind that. Um, da, 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 da. And then draw. Yeah, so we'll skip it. And now we do squadron patrol, patrol assignment. So I know that this is going to be coming to 3. But I don't necessarily know what's going to be happening. First of all, I'll note that three is looking at just, uh, they got plenty of bombers. They can do it. Okay, so it's coming to three. And I am really kind of, oof, boy, I don't have a lot available here, do I? This is not good. Hmm. Well, uh, let's bring this bit fire to patrol up. Let's bring one of these from to, uh, boy, I'm so hesitant to move them away from here because if this raid fizzles out, I don't know what's coming behind it. So um, let me just get these guys in the air. You know what? Screw it. No, they're going in there. It's just it all makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> Pull you forward. One of you up. I'm going to push one of these here into London to help me in case I can get something going over there. Hmm. All right, that's my plan. I'm sticking with it. Okay, so uh, I've done the squadron patrol assignments, um, and now we start the new raid phase. So coming along here to the raid phase, we figure out what this target is. So let's take that card and send it to the map. Drum roll, please. Okay, this is a Southampton port with a strategic value of two. Uh, we'll note that a port at strategic value of two is going to happen. So I'll roll to figure out how big. It's a one, so this is actually a minor raid. We know that this is the Luftwaffe is not depleted, so this does not promote to a rate, major raid. So this is actually a small, a small scale affair. affair. Uh, those of you in the chat room, again, feel free to chime in with uh, questions, concerns, or thoughts. Uh, happy to hear what you guys have to say as we go in here into this uh, early evening uh, raid, uh, hopefully just a, a, a harassment action. So this is going for the port at 111. Um, this is going to be a little bad because we note that actually one of these radar nets, radar net two, is damaged. So we will not actually get the benefit of seeing that. It's also not a major raid. So this may happen without us really knowing about it or doing anything with it. So, all right, um, we have our target. I now get to figure out if we detect this thing, and let's let's hope. Um, it is not a major. Let me bring this up. It is not a major raid, so I don't get that. It's not a follow-up. We're not depleted. The observer core value here for Apache Cloud is two, so thankfully I get people watching from the port. Uh, so that's plus two there, and I have one undamaged radar. That's another two. So I have four. This is at plus four. Hmm. Let's roll it. One. That's a five. <laughs> this is no warning. Poor intelligence. Ah, uh, okay. So what no warning is going to tell us is um, squadrons patrolling in route only. Ones that are already in the air can jump on these guys. And that's about it. 
um, I'm pretty sure even if I wanted to do a delayed response, I need to have something better. Nope, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, no adjustment is allowed if the warning level begins at none. So there's no delayed response here. Um, I just have people in the air and I can hit them with it and that's it. So um, no warning. I don't think I've ever rolled no warning. Like this might be a first. I've played, I've played this game five or six times. I've never played no warning. I've never had no warning. Okay, uh, so commitment. Um, <laughs> squadrons patrolling en route, period. So anybody airborne in 111 can respond. That's these guys. Okay, well, that's who gets to respond. Um, now I'll do raid size determination. Noting that this is a minor raid, so we'll send that to map. Okay, Ooh, big minor raid at four. Okay, so there'll be four group coming my way. Now I get to, uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, so I, I had to do my commitment at poor intelligence. I did that. Now I've got four, and now I will do my raid deployment. So the deployment here is drawing another force card. There will be four of these, which is two 88s, a 110, and a 109. So, 288s, which 88s did I grab? Let me grab a B110, and a 109. All right, and as noted here, Strictly speaking, mm, there seems to be a small discrepancy. It, it tells me here that, oh, that's for two player, Never mind. Okay, so I have no channel patrollers, um, and at none on this, the channel patrollers would come in either way. Move channel patrol to close escort. So uh, I've got one group hunting, and I've got um, these bombers coming in. All right, well, let's dance. So that was the raid deployment step. Next, we're going to have to uh, actually do the hunter interception. So the choice here is um, I can send in one uh, fighter further in uh, and have it be 1v1, the 109 group and the hurricane squadron while guaranteeing a partial intercept, or I can actually uh, get into a scrim here with the 109s. I'm just looking at the com air combat results table for against one squadron, and actually six combat factors is pretty good. Three combat factors is pretty not good. So I'm going to stick everyone right in there, and I'm in the hunter intercept, I'm not going to try and sneak anyone by. So since that is the case, we're going to now do our raid approach event. Figure out where that thing went. Here we go, raid approach event. British altitude advantage, and that does not apply. So we'll discard that. I'll discard these. Okay. All right. Uh, so that was the event. Um, and now we move on to the hunter attack. Okay. So uh, as I said earlier, I've got six combat factors against one group. Uh, that puts me on the F row of the combat results table. I'll go ahead and roll that result here real quick, which brings me at, whew, all right, six. That's a, that's a good number. So um, the first, uh, the, this is an A grouping. He gets an abort result, which brings him reduced. Would rather have killed him, but that's fine. Um, and for my units, um, the B unit is no impact, so he goes forward without a problem, and the C unit gets a disrupt result. Uh, I will choose to um, press here and bring him forward disrupted. And his remnants are going to come forward, and we're actually going to do a complete, uh, a complete interception here. So I would say that's a rather successful uh, hunter's attack. I'll take that. So now we're gonna do the raid target event. Let's grab that card. Okay, target event. 
non-essential target. All right, we've had this one before. We're going to reduce bomb damage. Uh, and what are we what are we attacking here? We're attacking the port. Um, and so that's just going to be victory points anyway. So um, he's going to be less effective on his bombing. It's fine. And now we do a squadron interception. Everyone gets intercepted. Each squadron pairs with a bomber group. So uh, I get everyone before they get to their target. And now squadron attack. Okay. So I've got 10 combat factors from the bombers, another five from mine for 15, two more from uh, the ME-110s for um, 17 against three Gruben. So I come Gruben, three, come down here, 17. That's also on the F row. We'll give that a roll. Five. Okay. Um, so on the Germans, A gets a light loss for one VP for me. The Bs uh, abort, and so for the close escort, uh, an abort reduces and moves over here. And then finally, I get a disrupt result on the C group, which flips him, and now he has the bomb somewhat less effectively. Now for me, what, what are the results here for me? I have an abort result for A grouping. I, I'm sorry, for A squadrons. I have an abort result for B squadrons. So a B squadron that abort uh, flips, and then I have a no effect on the C squadron. So that was okay. And now this port just gets bombed by, I will say, three measly bombing factors. I do get the one column shift for the clouds, and I did get an interception. So this is rolling on the two column against the port. All right, and that's a big nothing. So we'll send him back to rearm. And uh, we will uh, do the German recovery here. So um, everyone's in the in-fight blocks. The bomber groups went to their bases. These guys will go to rearm. Um, yep, that's all right. And uh, that will, of course, end them for the day. There's no way that they come back in at 1800, so we'll send them back to their base. Okay. And now we look at the clock update, uh, and we note that the clock update is a two-hour, uh, uh, a two-increment uh, update, which will bring us to the end of the day. Okay, so that gets us to the calendar uh, in the calendar update phase. So what do we do there? Let's discard all this stuff. Discard, discard, okay. Calendar update. So we'll start by doing a squadron and group reset. So all in-flight squadrons uh, go to their sectors uh, full, uh, which is fine. They're all, oops, actually. So we'll send you guys to your sectors. Um, all patrolling, rearming, landing squadrons to their sectors, retaining their facing. So we'll hit the, actually, end of day reset. Okay, that seemed to do a lot of things. Um, including, awesome, flipping all these groups. <laughs> all right, well, that button did everything. All right, magic button right here, end of day reset. Um, and so then further that, uh, flipped all group in, in their bases to face side up. All right, so uh, we're not doing the optional night raids, uh, which brings us now down here to day advance. So we're going to draw a day card now. Don't get to draw these very often. Okay, here's our day card. And now we're going to resolve this. Um, so... We're going to move the calendar um, uh, marker three days ahead, as uh, stated here. Three days elapsed, so we'll move the calendar marker from August 11th to August 14th. Uh, and we earn one VP per day, so that's three VP for us. Oops. All right, so now that we've got that... Each day, no, nope, that doesn't apply. All right. Oops, I'm sorry. All 
Um, so now we're going to carry out the event on this card. And what is the event on this card? Uh, the event is... Um, increase fighter escort if VP is greater than plus 8. It is not. Luftwaffe is pleaded. It is not. Um, and the date is after the 10th of September. It is not. So um, it looks to me that this event then is uh, not applicable. So I will not be adding these cards to the force deck. I'll not be adding these cards to the raid event deck. Um, yeah, that is uh, uh, that is what happens if you do the event. So okay, so that event is not applicable. They are not um, pushing uh, uh, to increase their fighter escorts at this point. I will update the replacement points, and so we'll notice here I get seven hurricanes and five spits. So let's see, hurricanes come here from nine to 16. Spitfires, I said I get five of those, so it's from seven to 12. Fighters go up five, bombers go up four. So fighters go up from 16 bombers go up four from nine to 13 okay so um, those are the new replacement points I think I get experienced pilots yes no experienced pilots here we go um, I'm in this VP range so that'll give me three more experienced pilots one two three um, so those of you watching experienced pilots are actually kind of a big deal here early in the war um, the British had enough uh, seasoned combat pilots to field replacements from the battle, but it did not take that long of fighting for them to actually kind of run out of people on the bench and have to pull people with not a lot of flight time. Uh, and so this game models the depletion of experienced pilots and the RAF uh, through this mechanic. All right, so now we're going to do light loss replacement. So for each um, squadron here in the light loss box, um, I am going to pay a replacement point of the matching type. So this will be two... Uh, Spitfire replacements and two Hurricane replacements and a seasoned pilot. And then they go back to um, uh, it the, essentially it'll leave this box. And so we'll go ahead and send all of these back to their sectors. It's two Spitfires, two Hurricanes. So let me find those Spitfires. Here we go. So I will lose two Spitfire replacements and two hurricane replacements and four experienced pilots so that brought me, brings me from 10 down to six see how this is going to be a problem all right uh, for each of the german group in this light loss box they essentially get these back they'll pay one fighter and two bomber uh, i'll send them back to their bases Getting them back to where they go. All right, so that was one fighter and two bombers. So here's the fighter replacement, and here are the bombers. One, two, bombers. Oh, sorry, my sound cut out there. Let me know if it comes uh, in or out again. All right, um, so now that we've done the light loss replacement, now we do the heavy loss replacements. Um, uh, thankfully, I do have two German group in the heavy loss replacements, so I'll bring both of those down here. Essentially, what happens here is um, spend one replacement point to move it to the light loss box. So uh, they are now there. That's one fighter, one bomber, and it'll take it another day's worth of replenishments before that those can come back into the force. All right, uh, so that's uh, the heavy loss part of the calendar update. Now reinforcements. Okay, so this is a thing that I have. I can spend three victory points to get a new squadron, uh, and I can do this up to two times. So uh, we'll note that uh, extra planes, and I'll zoom in on these guys. I have all of these planes here that I can just say, you know what, yeah, give me that one, um, and I can pay to bring them in. And so I've got two here in 10 
bunch in 11 and a couple in 12. So, um, yeah, I'm absolutely going to do this. <laughs> that is going to be a thing. Um, I don't like how thin I am here in 7, uh, uh, 11. So I'm going to grab one of these to bring forward. It's a hurricane. I can bring the Spitfire. Let me bring the Spitfire in. So I'll bring the 610 Squadron online. They'll come down here to 711. And I will have to pay three victory points for that, which brings me back down to zero. And now I will pay another three victory points to bring someone else in. And I want to say that one of these 311 squadrons actually comes. Yeah, so there's our calf. Do I have. Who do I have here? I like the idea of having someone with a VHF radio, if I can get them. Let's see, 511 has a VHF. Who else has a VHF? 410. 410 there. Oh, 511 with VHF would be awesome. Let me do that. Got it. Okay, so we're playing the advanced game rules. VHF radios, not yet, but soon, will actually let me deploy uh, squadrons that do have the VHF radio, not to adjacent squadrons, but squadrons, I'm sorry, not to adjacent sectors, but sectors adjacent to adjacent sectors. They actually then have a range of two once the VHF rules kick in, which is in, drum roll please, um, September 1st. So we're not there yet. It would be a couple more weeks, right? Um, but uh, assuming I w get to September 1st uh, for that last half of the game, uh, I th those guys give me a lot more legs. And even at where they are right now, they can reinforce 611, which gets hammered a lot in this game, uh, or come to London and patrol and potentially reach further out. So I think that's still okay. All right. Uh, so that is, um, let's see. Those are my replacements, uh, and that's reinforcements. And we do shuffle card checks. Uh, essentially, if the discard is larger than the deck, you shuffle it. We'll go ahead and discard this now. And uh, we see note here that uh, all of our decks are much larger than our discard, so we'll just go with that. And now we return a daily preparation. We're now uh, up here on the daily prep. So weather, so repair, this is, uh, Actually, not something I do very often. Okay, so um, uh, remove all light damage markers from the map. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so we're full up on our uh, radar, our radar net, which is good. That that was going to be uh, problematic. All right. Uh, so now we get to do time of day, which is going to be drawing a uh, event card just to get to the time of day. Uh, and that's an advance of one. So we'll discard, oops. We'll discard that and advance, uh, not, uh, we're not at six o'clock, we're gonna advance to eight o'clock. And now we'll do weather. So looking at the weather box, here we go, weather table. Two, clear in two, patchy in three. So clear in two, still patchy in three. All right, advanced warning. We note that the uh, time advance did not say we did not get advanced warning. So let's go ahead and send this target to the map. All right, so two east is in the advanced warning and two, and two east is actually what's coming at me here. So um, there, so I can do patrol assignments pretty confidently that two east is gonna be where this is coming, which is somewhere over here. Again, I am going to put dollars to donuts here that this is going to be in 611 or 511. Like 411, maybe? Um, but certainly nothing all the way back here in uh, 12 group. So let's do this. I am going to, you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring forward one of these, one of these. I want to push two of these over to patrol here. You're going to come into London. I'm going to push one of you to patrol 611. 
I'm actually going to bring in a couple of folks. All right, so I've got two patrolling 611. I've got two patrolling 711. I've got lots uh, stationed on the ground. I've got a couple in 411 even. One in London, and I'm actually going to push that to be two in London. I, I want to have a stronger London reserve. I, mean, I, could, I could make that three, but we do have a long raid day left. So let me leave it at two in London. We'll call it a day. So, okay, so that's my uh, patrol uh, assignment, and those are who's up looking for trouble now that we know that's coming. So let's figure out what our raid target is, shall we? All right, uh, this is an airfield, which is a medium priority with a strategic value of two. Now this is a forward airfield, which is an advanced game role. So uh, we'll, we're, we're gonna take that into account here. Um, actually right now, let's see what the implication is of a forward airfield. Uh, that's actually the first of the advanced game rules um, that I could add it in. So for the forward airfield targets, um, we subtract two from the detection modifier. It's actually harder to see this, and that's going to be the big one. And then we have some adjustments on resolving the bombing. Uh, but first of all, let's see if this even happens. Uh, again, uh, this early, the Luftwaffe wasn't convinced that the airfields were what they should be doing. Uh, and so, um, you know, uh, yeah, even odds here that this either isn't very big or it doesn't happen at all. So um, rolling on the German strategic value here out of four, that's a minor rate. Okay. Ugh, so this is going to be a minor raid against a forward airfield near the coast. I am not going to see this. This is going to be like that attack on the port last turn that um, just happened. <laughs> uh, and I had to have people up already. Uh, where is this going? 511. Um, oh, all the way back here. I'm glad that I put something up. Okay, so they're going to be coming here for North Weld. Or North Weald. Okay, well, let's figure out our detection. So, um, raid detection. It's not a major raid. I have two undamaged radar nets and it's clear skies. So I get three from uh, the observers and I get another four for um, the radar. So that, that should be a seven. However, as I mentioned with the advanced game rules for um, uh, for having forward airfields, uh, this is going to subtract two from the detection. So uh, it's four for radar, three for observers for seven, minus two is a five DRM on detection. Five and three is eight, which, you know, isn't awful. <laughs> Late limited. Um, so again, it's, it's one's patrolling in route. Um, but I get to see what's happening before I do any commitment. So we'll, we'll leave that as, as it is. So it's, it's late and limited. Uh, so I get to see the raid size before I do anything. So let's do that. So here's our force card, send top raid map. So the raid size for a minor raid is one. <laughs> it is one measly group. Uh, it's got to be some... I don't know, maybe maybe some like a photo recon DO-17. I know they're going to be bombing something, so I don't know. Maybe they got lost, but uh, okay. I can deal with this. I don't have to worry about a late response. This is just um, the patrolling squadrons happened to see it, and they, uh, they just jumped on it. So um, I will commit, and uh, this will be uh, patrolling en route. So let me grab the five, both of them, and I will send you to the hunt box, and they are committed. There they are. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so now we'll actually do the raid deployment. Um, so I will grab the next force card, and I get the top thing, which is an HE-111 from Luftwaffe 2. Yep. So here's the 111s. Um, let's see, I'll grab one of these Bs, I guess. Send to bomber box. Okay, and there we go. So this is going to be a rather quick thing here. Um, in Hunter Interception, there's really nothing to happen uh, since there's no one uh, to screen me. So we'll move these guys up here. We do get a raid approach event, so I'll grab that card. And that event tells us. Lift off. All right, so any 109s um, that are C 
move from hunt and inflate boxes to close escort. And, but thankfully there are no 109, so that event is not applicable. So we now have go from the raid approach event to um, the hunter attack. Again, that didn't happen. We're now doing the next event, which is our raid target event. So I'll grab that. Actually, let me make sure I discard these in order. There we go. All right. Um, oh, the, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Raid target event, flak. Reduce all B bomber group. And oh, this guy, this poor guy. <laughs> this is not going to go well for that guy. Um, okay, so he's reduced. Um, and now we are able to do the um, squadron attack. So he is intercepted. Um, I have six factors. He has seven. So that's going to be 13 total factors for one Gruppen. That is, that is pegged out. That's as uh, good a column for me as I can get. So rolling a d6. Well, a six on that column puts him in the heavy loss box. There's no way around that. So we obliterated that 111 group. Just obliterated it. All right. Um, and the only thing that happens here is uh, the C squadrons um, are disrupted. So he'll flip to reduce. Uh, let's see, flip. And these guys will come here to inflate. All right. Uh, that concludes uh, that interception. There's no bombardment. It doesn't happen. There's no recovery. He got uh, clocked. However, big problem here. Um, the time advance on that event was zero slash follow-up. So um, we get a new raid, and it's going against the exact same spot, and we don't advance the clock. So in fact, let me pull that target card back out, because um, we'll still have to detect it. So let's see here. There we go. Um, oh, crud. What happened to that target card? There, oh, it's still there. Oh, man. Okay, so um, so it is going to be a reattack against the Northwell air, uh, airfield. So we'll go to raid step two to conduct a follow-up raid uh, of the same type, minor or major. Interesting, so it's a follow-up minor raid. So raid step two, British detection. Just want I'm going to uh, quickly verify the follow-up raid information um, just to make sure that I am not um, missing anything notable. Um, I could see a minor raid leading up to a major raid. I can also see a minor raid followed by a minor raid. I suppose that works. Um, all right. Well, so that's that's what um, the my my play aid is telling me to do. So we will go with it. So now back to British detection. It is a follow-up raid, so I'll get plus one on this DRM. So I get uh, plus one, um, plus four for the radars is five, uh, plus three for the observers is uh, eight, minus two for the forward airfield is now six. So this is uh, detection at plus six instead of plus five. Uh, that puts me at a 10, which is late accurate. So I'll actually have complete information about this raid uh, before I have to commit to it. So uh, let's see here, raid size determination. Let's get that force card. Oops. There we go. This is a, uh, has a size of three and I have accurate intel. So um, I get to see what's actually coming at me before I decide well, you know, I, I'm actually going to have to bump up from uh, do a delayed response because uh, I can't, I don't have anyone that can respond late in the late column. All right, uh, so the three that are coming in the minor raid is uh, a 110, a 111, and a 109. So let me grab those. Uh, one of the Gucci 110 comes, so we'll have that be uh, this one. Send a close escort, 110, that was an A, 111, we'll take the C, and 109, we'll take the B. And 
that's how they are done. Okay. So that's those guys. And now I get to do my accurate squadron commitment. So again, this is a late detection here, which means that only patrolling en route. Um, oh, interesting. I misread that earlier. So five and six are patrolling en route. So if I wanted to, I could respond to these three with these two squadrons. And I think I do that. Um, I can let them bomb that air that forward airfield, but I, you know, I, I really don't think I do that. So we're going to do another delayed response. Um, I'm going to put that here in the bomber box. That way I remember to do bombing first. Um, and that shifts us from late to sufficient, which means um, patrolling and in sectors en route. Um, so I can get people on the ground in five and six. So I'm going to bring in both these guys in the air in six. These guys are going to go in the hunt box. And I'm going to get both of these guys on the ground in five. These are going to go to the hunt box as well. Okay. So they're going to get a chance to do their bombing first. Do I want to do that? Uh, you know what? I don't. I think... I think I do this all without the delayed response. That way I get a chance at getting them before, um, yeah, before, before they uh, obliterate my uh, oh, fighters on the ground. Okay, so um, that's my uh, squadron commitment. I am going to uh, now do hunter interception. I will send the bee through. He is going to get to the bomber. Uh, and all the Spitfires tangle with the uh, ME-109s and we'll do our raid approach event. All right, British altitude advantage, which doesn't apply. Okay, so uh, that is our raid approach event. So we'll now go to Hunter Attack. Uh, this is four um, combat factors against one group, which puts me on the E column. So I'll go ahead and roll on the E column here. Six, I'll take that. So this B grouping is disrupted, which means that he simply goes to end flight. Okay. My A, ah, uh, wait, that was a six. There we go. My A is disrupted as well. I will choose to take his disruption uh, to bring him to the bomber reduced. Uh, again, I just want to get fighters on these bombers. All right. Uh, so that is the result of Hunter attack, where I now have uh, one and a half squadrons intercepting the bombing group. Uh, grab the raid target event now. All right, big wing. If more than one squadron from 12 group is attacking, shift down one row. Um, well, actually I do have two, but they're both from 11 wing. So uh, the event is not applicable and I will have a time advance, thankfully. Squadron interception. So everyone's intercepted here. So I have now a total of five combat factors that I bring seven that they bring for 12 factors against two group. So two group, 12 factors, puts me on the F column. Yes, yes, okay. So rolling on the F column at two factors. Sorry, rolling at the F column against two group, three. So for the German group, I have an abort result for this um, close escort, which makes him reduced. I have a light loss result against the bomber for a victory point. Now against me, um, my A uh, has no effect, so he comes through. My B suffers a light loss. So that's going to be one victory point for them. Okay. 
but importantly, they didn't bomb the target. <laughs> So, so I will take that in its entirety. Okay, so nothing else happens now. Um, German recovery puts, um, let me send both these guys back to rearm. And that'll put this guy head three, one, two, three, and this guy head four. All right. And now we'll go ahead and do our clock update, uh, noting that our last event that affected the clock was a time advance of two. So we'll bring it down back over to high noon. And this then affords us the airfield ops. Uh, no German fighter turnaround, that doesn't happen. We did a time advance of two, so uh, let's see here. Um, rearm and land go to their sectors. We don't have any of those. All patrols go to their sectors. Um, full in flight, go to their sectors. And then reduced in flight goes to rearm flipped to full. Okay. Oops, I suppose I could send to their rearm automatically. There we go. All right. Okay, uh, so that's turnaround. Uh, I do have advanced warning on this one, so let me. Yep, uh, grab my target, uh, send to map. Okay, so Luftwaffe 3 is where um, I have to have an eye thing that things will be coming next. Um, maybe that's what the radio traffic is telling me or I've got some ultra intercepts. Um, but uh, two east again is where I'm, I'm expecting something somewhat major is coming. So let me... Um, Uh, let me go ahead and start then my patrol assignments. And so I'll bring a few of these guys in uh, to a bit more useful spot in two east. Again, kind of just pushing forward here a little bit. Keeping a little bit of a reserve. I'm going to note here that three is coming up next, so I don't think I want to overcommit. I've got two, I've got one here and four. Oh boy. You know what? Let me push one more up from 7 Eleven. Okay. Okay. I'll call that, I'll call that a deployment. So now let's go back to resolving our raid. So now that we've done those commitments, we'll figure out what the heck this target is. Airfield strategic value two. Again, this may or may not happen, so we'll roll on it. Three, another minor raid against Hornchurch Airfield. This note is not a forward target, so, um, oh, let me remember to discard the other one. There we go. Okay, so not a forward target. Uh, let's see um, about detection here. So it's a major raid for plus three. I've got two radar nets on it to bring me to plus seven, and it's clear, yes, yes it's clear, for another four, so this is plus 11. Um, so rolling on that, three plus 11 is 14. I have sufficient warning, patrolling in and in sectors en route, and I have accurate intelligence. So in route is 611, so I can pretty much bring anyone here, any of these five, that's pretty good. Um, and I will know exactly what's coming at me on this minor raid, right? That was a minor raid. I rolled a three, yeah. So uh, let's see what we have here. So um, raid size determination is um, accurate is one. So again, I've just got some poor loner coming at me. And now I get to do the rate deployment. So one lonely, 109, <laughs> uh, just comes oops, putzing along uh, and essentially is doing a fighter sweep, right? He's trying to hunt some things out. But boy, do I have his number. So now I get to commit my, commit my squadrons. And essentially all that's happening here is I've got this guy hunting. So I'm going to try and do something here. 
Um, I'm going to see if I can't fish for creating an ace squadron. And I've been keeping an eye on this, and I haven't been able to do it um, to, to date. But this gives me a good opportunity to increase uh, the experience in air to air combat. So if I'm on row, row A through G, so essentially if I can get eight or fewer combat factors um, here, um, and I um, get two more um, victory points than my opponent, and one of my squadrons has no effect, then I've created an ace. So I'm gonna try and do that. I'd like to get eight combat factors, but not nine. It would be fun to get nine, uh, and I can certainly blow this guy out of the water. How much do I have available to me? I mean, just with people patrolling, I've got 10. Uh, and I can bring another eight, I can bring 18 here. I mean, really anything above 11, um, I'm going to blow this guy out of the water. Um, and that could be fun. <laughs> That's an option. Uh, but what I think I'd really like to do here is try and make an ace squadron. So, um, yeah, so let's bring 74 squadron and uh, 501 squadron. They are going to be the ones that do the intercept. I'm not going to take a, a wholly take the bait. And this will give me uh, seven combat factors against one group. And when I go to resolve this, uh, which will put me on G, which will make it eligible for me to get an ace out of this. So let's go fishing for an ace. So I've done my commitment. I've done my interception. We're going to do our raid approach event now. Raid approach event is bombers break formation. Okay. And so reduce bomber group and not going to apply. So we'll discard all these. All right. And so now we're going to do this. So um, I'm on the G column. Uh, I've got my seven factors versus uh, his one group. Let's see how this goes. One. Um, that is the only thing I could roll that would make this absolutely impossible. But there you have it. So that A group in is simply disrupted. I did nothing to him. He comes away scot-free. He actually got the better end of this deal. My A squadron it goes to light loss. for a VP, my hubris. This was my hubris. Uh, and my B squadron is disrupted, which for a full squadron being disrupted um, just allows him to punch out here as well. Okay, and that's that. Um, I'll pull a target event card or a bombing event card simply in case there's something that, um, well, I need to know how much time advances actually. Uh, channel patrollers, no, no, it doesn't happen, but here's the important part. We get a follow-up rate against the same target. So oh, I'm glad I only did a partial commitment there. All right, so we're done. Uh, we're going to hop to the end of the sequence of play here for German recovery. This guy will come three ahead. One, two, three. He could come back if there's an evening raid. Um, and that's the end of German recovery. We have no clock update. It's a follow-up raid, so I have another minor raid against Horn Church. Um, and we'll see what I have here. So um, the minor rate against Horn Church is, um, was this a minor rate or a major rate? Did I get that right earlier? Seems to have a lot of threes there earlier. That has to have been, so yeah, draw a target card, roll the three, um, so strategic value two, airfield three is a minor raid. Okay. Um, all right, so again, it's a minor raid, but it's a follow-up. Um, so it's one and then another um, uh, four there uh, is uh, five, and then another four here is nine. And now I'm gonna be rolling again. Um, it looks like I had rolled previously and rolled as if it was a major raid. So we'll just take that as a lesson learned. So, okay, follow up raid one. Uh, radar nets get me to five. Um, and then uh, uh, plus nine uh, for my observers. Uh, that gets me to 13, which is early, intel uh, early warning, but poor intelligence. Um, okay. So, uh, regrettably, now that I have poor intelligence, I kind of have to pick. 
So early warning lets me actually bring in a lot of guys. Now I do know that this is only a minor raid, so I can bring in patrolling and in sectors in route or patrolling in range. There's a lot in range, five and seven are in range. So I can bring up this guy in 611 and I will. Um, what's in range? Um, five, seven in London. Um, or maybe that's just five and seven. Let's double check that. Nope, five seven in London. Okay. Um, I don't have anyone in London. I don't have anyone in seven. I do have a couple in five. Some of those guys. Uh, and so the option is: Do I want to bring these other two? And I think I do. Okay. All right. So that's the totality of that commitment. Um, uh, so now I get to figure out how big this raid is. Raid force card. All right, how big is it? Minor raid. All right, so I'm gonna get four squadrons and let me figure out what four they are, or four grouping. Um, it's gonna be two 87s and two 109s. So there's the 87s. That was an A and a B, and then two 109s. I'll grab a C and an A, uh, C and a, a. yeah. All right, uh, so that's what I have there. And now that I've done the raid deployment and I've uh, done my squad uh, commitment, I now do my squadron interception. I'm going to not learn my lesson and still try to get <laughs> uh, an ace out of this. Uh, so with two grouping, if I can get 15 factors is as most as I can get and pull this off. So what's 15 factors there? Uh, I've got 10, actually I have 17 factors. And so if I send um, one of these, I'll do that. I will send one hurricane through and that gives me, um, I think enough factors here. That's uh, 14 factors which will give me G. Uh, Tony, I see that you're uh, stepping away. Um, thanks for coming by, I'll see you next week. Uh, I'll be posting this over to YouTube uh, for anyone that's watching and has the bailout. If you wanna see kinda how this ends, I'll be playing here for about another 20, 25 minutes and then posting this and we'll, uh, I'll have this uh, game saved and in my back pocket ready to go. So, okay, so I did my uh, hunter interception uh, and essentially I, I'm allowed one hurricane to go through, make sure I get a good interception. Um, but still give myself good enough odds where I can maybe get an ace out of the deal. I do get a raid approach event, uh, so let me grab that event card and send map. Okay, so the raid approach event is cloud scatter the raid. If the region has patchy clouds or broken, which it doesn't, so we can discard that. We're, we have clear clouds on this side of the island. Okay, so we're gonna do the combat now. Now again, I engineered this at 14 combat factors against two groups put me on the G column. So I'm still in the column I want to be on. I just don't want to roll a one like I did last time. So let's try this. Five, I like five. Five is a much better number. So five, regrettably, oh, actually this could do it. Okay, so um, L, D, L are the response. So I have two light losses from these group. That's two VP from German light loss. And against my own forces, it's D dash A. So this guy goes through unmolested. This guy has to abort. We'll flip him. Um, and these guys can either go uh, straight to in-flight box or come through here and get, um, uh, start going after the JU-88s. Um, I'm thinking I want one to come, at least one to come through. So I'll push this hurricane through, uh, flipped, yeah. And I'll allow this guy to come here. Okay, so um, now let's pause and look back about me being able to make an ace. Uh, in the advanced game, the criteria to make an ace is I attack on rows A through G, which I did. The total net VP in hunter attack is plus two in my favor, it was. 
and at least one fighter got through with no effect, which was um, the 17 squadron. It got through with no effect. I now have an A squadron. And so, um, strictly speaking, you uh, swap it out for this one, and you know it's an ace. To help it uh, automatically uh, go still where it's supposed to go, I can just hit Control C here, and the Vassal module just tags this one as an ace, and I can apply uh, the ace shifts to it. So, actually, that being said, let me unflip this guy because I had forgotten that. Um, I would be getting uh, my second group through. So uh, that is now um, uh, going to be a fully intercepted uh, set of Stukas. So let's do our raid target event now. All right. Um, target event, secondary target. Um, A's and B's, which are all I have, bomb the secondary target which in this case is industry, okay. All right, but before they get a chance to do that, we are going to do squadron attack, okay. Um, so I have two groupin with 14 factors for them, another six factors for me is 20 factors against two groupin. That is pegged out. That is the eye column. This is why Stukas are really uh, easy to kill, uh, particularly in this game. Um, my ace allows me to go one level further down on this, but regrettably, there's no further down to go. So this is going to be rolled on the eye column, um, which is just really maxed out. So rolling on that column, roll the five, which is heavy damage results for both Stukas. These guys both just get obliterated by the Hurricanes for four VP in my favor. So that gets me from three to seven. And um, uh, what I roll? I roll the five. Uh, and um, I have one disrupted squadron. So he'll flip. And he'll just come out. Well, that was a good day. <laughs> good job, boys. Good job. Um, uh, so we just absolutely uh, crushed uh, that that minor that minor raid. Uh, there's no Germans to recover. We go to the clock update, um, noting that the time advance is zero. So we are staying here at the 12 o'clock hour, and we're getting another raid thrown our way. So I'm starting to look a little thin here. If anything's coming over uh, into 11 wing, uh, this is going to not look very pretty. So um, let me did I discard. Nope. Oh, all right. So discard that. And uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. So now that we're at zero, I will do a fresh target determination. So um, we'll send this one to the map. My advance warning is now back in 2E, so I really hope I get a clock update by then. But in Luftwaffe 3, it's a port. That's good because I'm pretty sure ports have very high strategic value to port, um, which is going to happen. So this type of raid is going to be a major raid against uh, the Weymouth port. Okay, um, so now we get to figure out a detection. Um, we have patchy clouds for two on the observer, four on the radar for a total of six. Uh, major raid for three more, total of nine uh, here. So we'll roll that. At Wait, uh, yep, at nine. Uh, we'll note that I kind of got hosed here and nobody has scrambled. I had advanced warning, but I didn't get everyone on patrol, so I've got nobody on patrol. Um, okay, so a net DRM here is nine, rolling on that. Uh, plus two gets me to 11. Sufficient, limited. So sufficient allows me in sectors in route. So anyone in 410 can just pop up and, and respond. Uh, and I've got a f three squadrons that can do that, so that's good. Um, but it's a major raid, so that might not be enough. Uh, so uh, sufficient and limited. Um, so limited warning will mean that uh, I don't have to commit right now. I have I, I have better than poor intelligence, so I get to know how big this is. How big is it? Seven. That's not so bad. I could, I could send three group at that and have this probably be okay. 
So that's how big it is. I now get to commit. I, I don't think I go late against this. I think that's kind of my point. Like they could hit the port. Maybe I could go late. If I go late, they get to hit first. There's not that many bombers. Uh, and I can increase uh, from patrolling and in sectors and route. So in sectors and route to patrolling in range. Well, that doesn't help me. 310 and 110 don't have anyone patrolling. Um, 310, 110. Yep, so it does. Uh, I've got what I've got. Okay. Uh, so I will commit all three of these. Um, they're going to go to hunt. They're going to go to their interception. Uh, and so now I'll do the raid deployment. All right. Um, this was seven. Uh, which brings me three 111s, a 110, and the rest of my 109s. So three 111s. Grab an A, B, and a C here. A 110 and three 109s. There's the 110. He'll go to close escort. And three one oh nines. And one of these will actually go to channel patrol, I believe. Yep. All right, that's what we have there. Hunter interception. Uh, dare I look at what column I'm going to be at? Let's see, this would be 12 against 2. Well, I mean, if I get really lucky, no, there's absolutely no way for me to make an ace out of this. I mean, it's a good column for me to roll on. I'm probably going to get good results. Yeah, I think I stay here, question mark. Yeah, I stay here. I'm going to keep them all in the box. Okay, so uh, I'm going to keep everyone there for the interception. Uh, our first event for the approach is going to be Channel Patrollers Hunt if the target is coastal or inland. Uh, it is coastal. Okay, so this guy here is actually going to come down. I'm glad I kept everyone here. <laughs> he joins the hunters. Ugh. Um, and now we'll do our hunter's attack. So, okay, um, this is 12 combat factors against three grouping, which is not nearly as awesome. This is the E row. Um, yeah, well, let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, rolling on the E row against three grouping, five. Okay, um, that's going to give me um, no kills on these uh, Germans, but they will all abort. So uh, flip them over and they'll come here. Now against me, my A goes to light loss. So um, the B goes through fine and uh, the C is disrupted. So I'll go ahead and flip him, have him go through full. All right, uh, so I had a light loss. So we'll decrement my victory point. All right, not too bad. Um, we will pair off two of these to not be intercepted. Uh, let me just not get ahead of myself here um, because I believe before I do interception, I do a raid target event, I do. So we'll go ahead and discard these cards uh, and do our raid target event. So I'm target card map. Channel patrollers to close escort. Okay, well the channel patrollers already uh, had their fun. So go ahead and discard that card. And now we'll do that attack. We'll do the interception. So one of these will not be intercepted. I'll arbitrarily say here that B is not intercepted and uh, that is who A was closest to. And so now I have uh, this pairing. 12 factors from the bombers, another six factors for myself. So 18 factors against two group puts me on the H row, which is a pretty good row for me. Uh, rolling a four means um, this bomber aborts. Um, and this bomber goes to heavy loss. Again, I'm loving the heavy loss, so two more points. 
All right, now against me, um, I get two disrupt results. And so the disrupt result against my full squadron uh, reduces them, and actually it's the same result for both. So they both go to their reduced sides and go to end flight. Okay, so that is uh, the result of that interception. Um, this S, um, we now do actually have bombing. Uh, the escort won't get a chance to strafe because he was too busy uh, protecting uh, his, his guy. So let's see here. This region, let's see, where is this? Luthoff 3, which is patchy clouds. So that's a one shift uh, on bombing. So let's see here. Uh, I've got five bombing factors. Um, so five bombing factors. One shift to the left puts me on the three column. Uh, and we'll just roll on that for bombing this port. Two is absolutely no effect. Okay, good job. So for German recovery, um, what will happen now is... Um, Um, and, and after bombing, I'm sorry, we'll go ahead and uh, push these guys here with no issues. Okay, so bombers go to the air bases reduced. Um, and then fighters go uh, clock plus three or clock plus four. And the reduced guys, there is no clock plus four, so they'll just send their bases. All right. So that should end German recovery, uh, which now brings us to checking what the clock is doing. Uh, time advance is one. So we're gonna keep getting hammered here. So with that clock advance, um, we're going to start by doing German fighter return around. He's going to go to his base. All right. So it's now 1400. Uh, we only have one time advance. So what's going to happen down here is these rearms are going to go to their bases. Should be control O. Yeah, all right. So rearm goes to their sectors. Landing box go to rearm. What's this guy got going here? Um, All patrol go to rearm, all patrol go to sector gut. Um, all squadron, patrolling squadrons go to rearm, so I'll click that. All right. Full squadrons in flight go to their sectors rearm. So these guys will all go to rearm. And reduced squadrons in flight go to the landing box full. All these guys should be going to landing. All right. So I've got a lot of squadrons here on the getting recycled board, which is going to be problematic. That's more than I'd like to have down there. Um, I do get advanced warnings, so let's go ahead and take a look at the cards and uh, make sure I discard the target card, unlike previous times. All right, discard. All right, so two east is who I think... Um, where I think it's going to go. It might be two south, however. Two south is the one that's uh, on deck. So that's my advance warning, and now I get some patrol assignments. Ugh. All right, problem, I mean, two east and two south are both looking a little thin at this point. Um, what what I, I think I want to do is I, I want to sortie one of these to London to help cover. Definitely want to push as far in as I can. I'm not going to have a lot of coverage here. This is actually pretty bad. <laughs> 611 does get hammered. I want, I want to put as much there in 611, but um, as we saw earlier um, on south, it does not hurt to have some folks patrolling um, other places. So, yeah, let me just go on to London. Okay, we'll do that. Um, yeah, we'll call that, we'll call that our deployment. 
Uh, and so now we return to our raid step. So let's see what we got. We're going to start by flipping this and Horn Church Airfield Strategic Value 3. Like I said, they like 611. So uh, Airfield at 3 is going to have a raid. This time it's going to be another minor raid. I'm happy for them, but it's going to be against the forward elements, one of the forward airfields here. Okay. So we're not going to get a major raid. We're actually going to get minus 2 on this detection. So speaking of this detection, uh, it's a minor raid. It has four from the radar nets. It has four from observers for eight, minus two for being forward. So this is at plus six on my uh, detection. Uh, so that gets me nine, which is sufficient but poor. So squadrons patrolling and in sectors en route. So anyone in 611 can respond to this. I've got two. And this is going to be poor intelligence, so I kind of have to make this call right now. Um, I can do a delayed, um, but uh, in doing so, they'll get to hit the airfield, which has plenty of guys trying to get back up. That's actually going to be quite disruptive. Um, let's see. But that would bring me to the early column, which will allow me to do um, anyone in 5, 7 in London to hit them. Uh, and so that would potentially allow me to bring four more squadrons. So do I go with the two, or do I go with six, but allow them to take a, take a shot at the forward airfield? Potentially, let me take a look at this forward airfield rule. This might not be as bad as them hitting the main base. So an H result um, gets a, um, as a 2 when calculating victory points and bomb damage. So they'll be capped on how much actual infrastructure damage they can do to me. Um, I think I'm going to go late. I think that they get this, but I'm, I'm marshalling my forces. Well, it's going to be a minor raid, though. It's, this isn't a major raid. So, all right, minor raid. I'm just going to send the 2. It's done. Uh, so let's see what we have here. So for the force cards, it's two squad, uh, two grouping, uh, a 111 and a 109 from Luftwaffe 2. All right, let's get the 109 from B and the 111 from anything else. A sounds great. Okay, and here I was, so, so worried. <clears throat> All right, so that's the commitment, and that's the raid size. Uh, let's see. I do hunter interception before doing the raid approach event, so I uh, need to figure out if I can push anyone through. Uh, at seven, again, I have a chance at making an ace uh, so long as... Um, every, about maybe a one in three shot at making uh, an ace here. Actually, one in six shot at making an ace. Not, not really worth it. I'm going to make sure this gets intercepted. I'm going to send this guy through. Okay, so that's um, a hunter interception. Now we're going to do the raid approach event. So let's see here. Clouds inhibit the hunters. If the region has clouds, it does not. Okay, so that's that. Um, well, so now we have the interception to resolve. I've got four combat factors against one grouping, which is on the E uh, row. Nothing else happening there, so rolling that. One, not what I was hoping to see. So, um, so this group actually has a no effect uh, result given to it. So he actually now becomes a close escort. Oh, this is bad. Um, however, my poor guy there gets a light loss result. And that was very unfortunate. Okay. So um, the, the Jerry's got the drop on me on that one. Uh, and so this is just not going to go well. Uh, raid target event now. Cards, raid target event. Okay, 
undetected escort. If the intelligence rating is poor or limited, hey, look at that. I had poor intelligence. Um, so uh, quickly checking the rules on what undetected escort uh, means. Move one fighter group in from its air base to the close escort box, in addition to those already assigned to the raid. Select any 109 before selecting the 110, unless the range it's beyond the range of the 109s. Oh, this is going to be pretty bad. <laughs> so I get another 109 coming at me. Let's see here. Let me get a good selector here. I'll choose a, a C109. Close escort. Okay. So, oh, this hurricane is just going to get destroyed. Please tell me that was a clock two. No, clock one. Yeah. Okay. So now um, resolving the combat. He does get with uh, the bomber, which is good. However, it's nine combat factors against three group, which puts me only down on the D column, which really I was expecting that to be worse, but okay. So we're on the D column. Rolling on the D column is one. I, I gotta stop rolling ones. That's that's where I'm going wrong here. Um, oh, a grouping abort, no bombing. Uh, B grouping do nothing. So he'll just, uh, what happens here? Full escort goes to in flight. Okay. C grouping are disrupted. Uh, which is in flight reduced. All right, and what happens to me here? I abort. That C uh, guy aborts. So he will flip and come here. Okay, that went about as good as I could hope. I, you know, maybe shooting something down would have been a little bit better, but uh, I'll take at the very least not bombing. I mean, they did their jobs. You know, uh, killing the, the German aircraft was really kind of a secondary consideration, really, uh, in all of these um, primary considerations, keeping them from hitting their target, and that happened. So uh, German recovery will send you back to rearm. Uh, we'll send, let's see, what time is it? It's uh, 1400, so nobody is going anywhere. So we'll flip all these, send them back to their bases. Okay. And... Uh, I get a time advance of one. So we'll just discard everything. And my uh, clock update is one, sending you back to your base, and now doing the one turnaround. So all of these in rearm go to their sectors. Everybody landing goes to rearm. Everybody patrolling goes to rearm. Oh, that's the P1 button. And full in flight goes to rearm. Nobody. And reduced in flight goes to land flip to full. Okay. Again, a lot of guys on the ground getting cycled. This one hour turnaround has been uh, not very kind to me. Uh, so that was our clock update. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so that was um, part of our airfield ops. We'll do our advanced warning now, which is going to send this to the map. So two south is who I'm expecting to see. Two east is on deck. Um, so I'm going to kind of bring in um, anyone near Luftwaffe 3 to, to help out here, but that's what we got. All right, so I'll, I'll get to do patrol assignments here. Two south is the primary, east is the secondary. Ugh, where 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 is... 410. <laughs> Where is everyone over here? Uh, they're all on the ground waiting to take off. Uh, oh, uh, this is this is bad. I've got I've got nothing, nothing ready to go in the air. Um, ugh. Well, all right. You patrol your sectors. Yeah, that's, that's what I got. I'll, I'll send this guy over to patrol London, maybe. Wow. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to do. I'm, I am ready for the Luftwaffe to take a breather. This is, this is just brutal. This is really, really brutal.
All right, um, and so now let's keep going on our, um, uh, if they can keep doing minor raids, that would be great. I'd be fine with that. All right, um, this is going, ooh, interesting. This is going for uh, Farnborough, which is a city strategic value one. Oh, man. Okay, so this absolutely doesn't happen. Absolutely does not happen whatsoever. So that's going to be discarded. So I was thinking everything would be coming in down there. And lo and behold, it's actually coming into two east. Luftwaffe three is the next one. So let's flip this one over. Hornchurch Airfield, 611. Airfield with a strategic value of three. I rolled a one, so it's another minor raid. And I will take all of these minor raids. Okay, minor raid. Let's do our detection. Um, nothing uh, here on this column. Uh, it's not a major raid. I have four DRM for the um, detection nets, four DRM for the observers for eight total DRM. Rolling with eight DRM is 13, which is early but poor. So I have a minor raid with poor intelligence, but very early warning. Squadrons patrolling and in sectors en route, patrolling in range. So anyone in 611. Anyone in the air in three, five, seven. So let's take a look here. Anyone in six, eleven? Well, you guys are going to intercept. Anyone? Let's see. What, what did I say? Oh, or in the air in London. Well, you know, let me do that. Um, three, five, seven. That really doesn't buy me that much, but I'll take I'll take London. All right. You know what? Yellow. I'll take seven. I'm going to take everyone. And just there. Meh. All right. Um, so uh, that was poor uh, Intel Squadron commitment. Raid size determination now. No raid. <laughs> uh, you know, I just, I'm just uh, burning gas, flying all over the place here, and um, wasting time. So, um, if the raid size is no raid, move any committed squadrons to the in-flight box, retaining their facing. Raid does not occur. Return to step one, raid target determination. I just have no idea what's happening today. This is uh, me getting head faked. Um, okay, so all of you guys go to in-flight. If I go to in-flight, I mean I have to drag you to in-flight. And send map. Okay, so two south is what would happen if this loops off three thing doesn't happen. This is industry with strategic value of two. All right, so this was only a raid if I roll a hard six. I rolled a hard six. So this is going to be a minor raid. All right, so it's patchy clouds in Luftwaffe three. So two from observers, four from radars. It's a minor raid. So DRM of six, seven total. Uh, I have late warning and poor intelligence. So really, I can only respond to this if I have people in the air in 111. And miraculously, I do have people in the air at 111, so I'll commit them. Um, oof, I guess I, I don't know how I lucked out there. Uh, so that was poor squadron commitment. After poor squadron commitment, I get to do raid size determination and raid deployment. So raid size. Oh, come on. <laughs> Minor raid, intelligence poor, no raid. There's just confusion abounding here. There is nobody knows what's going on. And people are just sending fighters uh, uh, to parts of the sky and nothing's coming through. Look at this. I've got six squadrons that are just committed places for no good reason. Um, this has just been an exhausting hour. Very confusing. Okay, lift off to south. Send deck to map. Two south is the backup on this. I'm going to flip you over. Airfield, strategic value one. This is only a raid on a one or a two. It's a five, not a raid. There's got to be a limit to how many of these I can go through before we just move on. Uh, um, 
but no, no, we're just going to kind of keep rolling the dice here. So, okay, so that doesn't happen. Two south, three if not, flip over. All right, industry strategic value of one, doesn't happen. Luftwaffe three. Industry strategic value of three, 50-50 chance of this happening, doesn't happen. Wow, at some point here, I'm going to get to a raid that actually happens. <laughs> Airfield, strategic value two, major raid. Okay, well this is perfect. After having already, oh, there's nothing here. <laughs> Look at that, there's absolutely nothing here. And they all got head faked someplace else. Okay, so this is gonna be a major raid against Horn, uh, Horn Church, like I thought earlier. Okay. Uh, so major raids, that's plus three on the detection, four more for radar nets, uh, which is um, seven, plus four more for observers, plus 11, 12 total. I have sufficient uh, warning and limited intelligence, which means that um, I get to see how many first. This is going to be major raid eight group with sufficient patrolling and in sectors in route. That's 611. That's nothing. The only nearby folks that I have is someone patrolling in 211. There's no way I can get them in. So there's nothing I can do. These guys will just fly in and do their thing. So I'll just go through now to deployment and I'm just gonna watch this happen. Um, how many did I say this was gonna be? This is gonna be eight. So, um, and Luftwaffe too. okay. So I don't have the uh, 87s. Those have already been kind of locked up. So what we're going to get instead are 88s and then 17s. So I'm going to have three 88s, an A, a B, and a C. Nope, never mind. I'm gonna have an A and a C. And then VO17, I'll take a B from them. Okay, so those are the bombers. Got three bombers of my eight. I'm going to have, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, one, oh, nines. One, all right, so one, two, three, four, Noting that one of these is a channel patroller and one of these is an escort. Okay. All right, so uh, moving through the se uh, sequence of play here, um, the raid's been deployed. There's no interception, so if there are no squadrons, all these group and go to end flight. <laughs> they couldn't find anything to shoot. Um, I do still do my events. So the raid approach event is rendezvous failure. If the raid has seven or more groupin and it had eight, all A groupin in the bomber and close escort box leave the raid. So this guy never made it. I'm okay with that. Um, and so now we go through, let's see, that was the raid approach event, raid target event. Um, big wing, which doesn't apply, but the important part here is that we get no clock update. <laughs> so this is just gonna be super. All right, so um, that's the end of the events. Um, uh, now that we're done with the raid target event, we're going to go to squadron interception. There are no squadrons in BB, so all group and in close ex, uh, escort come down here to strafe. They apply two column shift right when bombing. So I'm going to have some 109s here that are going to, uh, you know, fire. This is at an airfield. Where is this? This is against Horn Church. So uh, those guys are going to get a chance to start shooting some of these aircraft on the ground that are trying to scramble again. 
All right, so let's take a look at this. When attacking radar city headquarters and military bases, 109s do not attack, but they're attacking an airfield, so they're going to be strafing aircraft um, and attacking fuel and ammo dumps with, with uh, bullets, etc. It's a two column shift rate. So total bombing strength here is uh, 10 total bombing strength to include the 109 strafing. I am going to have a two shift right for not having intercepted at all. Um, and uh, this is clear weather. So this is on the 15 to 17 column. Three. Okay. So the three result is two. So that will be two victory points for the Luftwaffe. But importantly here, um, I move a number of squadrons equal to the damage from the airfield's sector to the landing box on the tote board. If there aren't enough squadrons on the map, take them from the rearm box. So two squadrons will come, or I guess the one squadron will come here from rearm to land. It's just getting disrupted and getting able to get out the door. I lose one replacement point for every squadron in the landing or in light loss box up to that damage number of two. Um, and so uh, I lose a Spitfire replacement, essentially. Uh, that's hurricane. There we go. So, all right. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. So we'll we'll take that. Uh, for now for German recovery, um, these guys are. Let's see, coming here. These guys are coming here. Uh, none of them are going to be able, given the hour, to come back. So they will all go back to their bases. Uh, well, we'll do this. Send you, oops, send you back to your bases, send you to rearm. All right, uh, and regrettably, our event card said no time advance. So we are here yet again with uh, just kind of seeing what the Luftwaffe wants to do with us. This is apparently noon. Noon was when they sent, uh, I'm sorry, 1600 is when they get a lot of confusion and send everything. So what's next? To east, it appears. To south on deck. So, to east. Airfield. Strategic value 3. I rolled a 1, so it's a minor red. Yeah. All right. So, we'll go with detection. Um, no major raid bonus. A 4 from radar nets. This is Luthoff 2, so 4 from observers. This is 8 to detect the minor raid. 8 and 4 is 12, so I'm still there, sufficient and limited. Um, let's see here. It's going against 511, which is back here. Maybe I can get 411. 411 is in range. So sufficient. Nope, patrolling in range. I would need to get very early to get, no, so there's just nothing for me to do. Yet again, I'm watching them attack an airfield with a minor raid. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and just uh, then pull all this out. So the force card here, minor raid, one. And that's gonna be a 109. Um, is this, yes, it's in range for 109s. So, oh, interesting. So this is just going to be a fighter sweep over the airfield then. So I'm going to grab a 109. I'm going to send him forward. He's going to go to the hunt box. There's going to be no one there for him. Um, and then he's going to essentially go in flight and, and just be done. He was trying to do a fighter sweep. Uh, I still do get to pull the two events just to double check just to double check what happens. So the first event is going to be um, German altitude advantage, which is not really going to matter. And then the target one is interception of the coast. Again, doesn't matter, uh, but with the time advance. So I'll take the time advance. All right. So that ends that. He is going to uh, flip and go home. And now I do a time advance of one, which we are just going to inch back to being able to wrap this up. So it's twilight. And yet again, we've got some bombers coming our way. 
Okay, so everybody rearm goes their sector. I'm finally going to get some toys to play with here. So well, you guys will all go to your sectors. You guys are going to go to rearm. Patrol is going to go to rearm. Not that many left. Full in flight are going to go to rearm. No, that's terrible. Um, okay, so that's that. So that's squadron turn around, German turn around, advance warning for all the good this is going to do me. Okay, so two south is where I think it is, or it could be two east. Now patrol assignment. All right, I'm not going to hold my punches here too much. Oh, I've got nothing in two east if it ends up doing that. That's terrible. That's really bad. All right. Um, I'm going to send this entire group here. I'm going to go here. I don't have a lot else to do. Actually, this 111 guy, I'm going to have him come in. I'm going to bring these over here. I mean, I'm just going to try and get everyone up and somewhat close to something useful. All right, everyone's up, or at least everyone I care about. You know what, there's no point in staying on the ground, so everyone, everyone in the air. You too, everyone in the air. Okay, uh, so that's patrol assignment, now I'll go back and start figuring out what happens here. Okay, so lift off to south. Airfield, strategic value three, so that's gonna be something. Two, minor raid. All right. So let's take a look at what this minor raid is going to be. Uh, I've got three radars on that for plus six. However, only plus two for visual. So eight DRM on this. Plus one is nine. So this is sufficient but poor intelligence. So I'm pretty much going to have to make this commitment now. Uh, I've done my detection. Now I have to do poor commitment. So sufficient means patrolling and in sectors in route. So 111 is it. I can do anyone in 111. This is minor raid, so I'm just going to take those two. I'm not going to worry about a late response. All right, so this is poor. So now I get my pair of force cards, first one. So um, just one. Uh, and so let's figure out who that is. And I've exhausted that deck. That's super. Uh, an ME 110 from uh, Luftwaffe 2. I think the better of the 110s. That's this one. All right. Um, so uh, there's a standard rule in deployment, German raid deployment of uh, when you do a 110, uh, they've got to be deployed as close escort. So essentially it's going to be as if he's, we're just going to get one interception chance at him, I, I believe. So just double checking what happens if you're only deploying um, a 110. Uh, ME 110's in the close escort box. Uh, if there are no bombers in the bomb box, place them in the bomb box. Okay, got it. Um, So he is the bomber, if you will. Uh, so that gets me through um, raid deployment. So now we're gonna do hunter interception. Uh, there's no group in here, so all these um, squadrons will come in here to the bomber box. Uh, let's see. Um, so now we'll do the raid approach event. Radio confusion if five or more squadrons are in the raid, and there is not, so we'll leave that. Just got all those. Um, okay, so that was the raid approach event. We do not do a hunter attack, so now raid target event. All right. Channel patrollers, too close escort. Uh, and a time advance. All right, so that doesn't matter. 
So now that we've done all the events, squadron interception. So it is intercepted and squadron attack. So I've got nine combat factors against a single group. Um, so with that, uh, one group, nine combat factors, that's the H row. Go ahead and roll that. Four. Um, that A marker, he is an abort result. I was hoping for something a little bit stronger than that, but he aborts. Um, and for me, I am disrupted uh, for both of those. So they both will flip. Actually, I take that back. Uh, disrupted. Oh yeah, is in flight reduced. Okay, so that's my result. And that is all she wrote for that one. So German recovery, we'll send you back to your base. Uh, clock update, clock moves to end of day. And we can now finish the day. Go to calendar update phase, okay. Move all in-flight squadrons. Let's see, actually there's the end of day reset. Let's see what this does for us. We'll send you to your base. Okay, end of day reset a success. Everyone should be back to where they are. Great. Um, and so now we'll do the day advance. We're gonna draw a day card and we're gonna figure out, oops, discard that, discard that. Get our day card. All right. Five days elapsed. So let's see here, one VP for a day, five days elapsed. One, two, three, four, five, August 19th. Five VP for me. Brings me to a total of 10 VP. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, and so now we're gonna be doing that day, the event listed on this card, the day event. So the event set German target priorities. We are now on August 19th, which still puts us in this initial uh, line. So we're gonna have radar high, port high, airfield medium, that's the default. Okay, so we have no change in our events. Light loss, repl update replacement points. Oof, 12 hurricanes and eight spits. Um, I don't even think I can take all 12 hurricanes. So hurricanes get pegged out. Spitfires go to 17. Um, eight fighters, seven bombers for the Germans. So eight fighters to 22. Seven bombers to 17. Okay. And replace experienced pilots. Um, I currently have 10 victory points, positive 10. Uh, which nets me five experienced pilots. So I'll take this from six to 11. All right, so that's the update uh, replacement points. Now for light loss replacements uh, for all of us. So for the RAF, let's see, one Spitfire, one Hurricane, two Spitfires, two Hurricanes. So go ahead and take those. Uh, that's four experienced pilots. Two Spitfires, two Hurricanes. For the Germans, we'll do that as three Fighters. And one, two Bombers. these bombers back to where they go. All right, 
Um, and now we'll do the heavy loss replacement. So that will be, um, all right, so we'll note here that um, the JU88s actually stay right where they are. <laughs> um, uh, there are no replacements ever for JU88. So this will be two more bomber uh, re reinforcements uh, consumed to bring those guys back. All right, so uh, the war continues on. So that was the heavy loss replacements. Now I get my chance to do reinforcements. I'll discard this. So for reinforcements, I'm still in the, um, uh, the three victory points per reinforcement. And I think I still do take the six victory point hit to get two more uh, squadrons. So I think what I'm going to do here again is I'm going to take another VHF squadron and I'm going to take another squadron for 611 because they seem to be getting a lot of action. So, or do I want to do a 311 and that way they have a little bit more utility. Nope, nope, 611 it is. That 410, yeah, the 410's got the 311 utility. Okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna bring in the, these two squadrons and send them to their sectors. All right, so we're starting to flush out the bench. Just got a few more reinforcements. Um, shuffle checks, all right, I'm actually gonna have to do this now. Um, I discarded everything I need to discard. Now let's take a look at these decks. All right, um, I actually uh, have more target cards than the discards. That will not get shuffled. I will uh, reshuffle the force deck. I will reshuffle the event deck. Okay, and we'll leave that. All right, and so now that leaves us at the end of this and we are ready to begin anew at the, tar at the start of the day prep phase for um, August 19th. So I think this is a good point for us to leave it. I will go ahead and save this game when we uh, end the stream. Uh, and that way I have the option to pick this back up on another day that I wanna just keep playing. It should be another Wednesday at uh, eight o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, although if I um, get some time to play, I might just give everyone an hour heads up that I'll be streaming and then get back into this. Um, kind of an interesting, uh, interesting play here, uh, and, and I got to some uh, events and some themes that I tend to see when playing this where you know, there are times when you've got some good information and you're able to focus your efforts and uh, get a lot of fighters on there, and you can see I even created that ace uh, out of that uh, hurricane unit. Um, however, um, there are times you just don't have the information and you end up committing uh, and having it not work out uh, and then you, you've committed. Uh, there, and so it's a balance between how much do you throw at a problem to uh, try and bring down uh, the opponent uh, versus how much do you want to have in your pocket to do so again next time. So. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone that's uh, watching this or, or viewed the stream to um, go ahead and uh, you know follow me or subscribe on Twitch, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash alecmg. Um, you, know, you can uh, follow me on YouTube as well. Uh, and please do come by Reddit and join the conversation. Uh, the uh, Reddit grognards over at slash r slash hex and counter. Uh, we'd all be very happy to have you come by and talk to us about wargaming and ask us questions um, and uh, you know share our opinions on, on games and what we're playing. Um, but uh, I had a great time playing. Thank you all for uh, uh, taking some time with me. And uh, I think with that, I'll sign off uh, for the night. So uh, good night, everyone. And uh, that's a wrap.